Hi everybody. So we're talking about feng shui and offices today. We're going to go over two different scenarios. One is a typical office, um, an optimal setup, and I'm going to be doing it in the computer so you'll see how that's set up. I'm also going to be doing one for what happens if you don't actually have a dedicated room as an office. What do you do if you have to use a multi functional room or a room that has more than one purpose. So that's, we're going to talk about how you set up that workspace to make sure that you're still getting the benefit of all of that energy and that you really feel secure and set up so you can really have control over your business, your work, your workspace, and your studies. So let's move over to the computer and we'll take a look. Okay, so here is our first office, office number one, or corner office. This is an ideal office. So this would be, if you're lucky enough to get the nice corner office at your corporation, um, or you have happen to have a big enough room or bedroom where you can have this uh, really great layout. And the reason I, am, I picked this is it's a perfect square. So I'm creating this, this didn't exist. This is my creation. It's the perfect square. The desk is able to be positioned in the command position. So when you sit, you can see the door or whoever is seated across from you. So you've got this great view of the door. You've got a great view out these windows. So you're in the command position, similar to um, the video on bed placement, same concept. Now you can go a little further here and make it even better. Here I am adding a rug to ground it. And I've just tucked it under the legs of the desk and underneath the two guest chairs. So what else could we do in this perfect office? Well, add a couple plants into the wealth corner. We have the desk, we have the printer and filing cabinet just behind so it's easy to access. Maybe you wanna add a little inspiration. So what's nice about this too is that it's got this supporting wall behind it. So there's windows, 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 door, but you have a solid wall behind you for support. And we can even add behind a piece of artwork that would be inspiring to you that basically has your back. So you could put a piece of art that you love, that's inspiring, that's going to keep you motivated. Uh, also, if you, likewise, if you don't have windows with a beautiful view, you could instead put a beautiful piece of art right across here as well, or wherever you're seated so that what you're looking at is inspiring. So as I say, this is an ideal office situation. And if you have this fantastic, good for you. This is, the, you're lucky, this is great. Um, and you can work with this. What I'll do in another video is I'll talk about how you can take this even one step further and how you can feng shui your actual desktop. So that's another video. Another thing would be optimal colors for your office. But right now we're just talking about the flow of energy and how, um, how it's best to set up your office working with what you have. If you have this situation, fantastic. We're gonna move on in the next design to one that is less perfect, working with what we have. This is the office too. Probably a more familiar setup to many people out there, even me. <laughs> when you are creating, a, especially if I, I call this the work at home scenario, or likewise a student. This setup here that we have, we have a sofa here, but you know, it could easily be a bed because it's a space that needs to serve multiple purposes. So with this one, in this example, it's a family room um, with the built-in, with the built-ins here, with the small condo size sectional, with the TV. So you need, many of us work this way where we need to carve out a space. We don't necessarily have a dedicated room that we can set up our office in like the first uh, example. So here we are, we've got this nice little cove here, this nice little niche that you know works well. If you don't need to use it for an office space, it would be a great little window bench or reading bench, but here we're gonna turn it in to a, an office. So the same principles apply except for we cannot set it up for the command position. We could, but you'd lose a lot of space. So, you know, ideally you could do this, okay? And then you gotta move your printer over here. You gotta move here. So let's just say we're gonna use a monitor for this. Often it might be a laptop, but here's all your paper. 
papers. Let's get those back. And you're facing the door now. It's great. Now you got this filing cabinet here, so we'll put this back here. It's not ideal. It feels a little more cramped, but uh, and assuming that the window has at least, um, it's not floor to ceiling, so let's assume that it, it comes up at least 30 inches. There's a 30 inch wall and then the window. Um, this could work as well. But what's important here, uh, what's important in an office is you have to be able to get behind your desk, obviously. So you wanna make sure that there's enough flow that you can access the areas, that you can pull your chair back. So you can see the door, which is great. So you can see what's coming at you. And the command position, just to reiterate, if you haven't watched the bedroom video, is really where you can sit, lie, stand, in this case sitting, facing what is coming towards you. So you want to be prepared for all opportunities, be aware of any obstacles that might be ahead of you, and putting yourself in this position allows you not only to greet the energy coming in, but really your subconscious to, to operate on a level where it's a level of knowing and being aware and feeling comfortable that it can see what's, what's coming at it. Now, the little interesting part of this is there's a window here. So, you know, your back isn't supported as it was in the other. So I think given if you're working on a laptop and you don't have a lot of electrical equipment and, and it would work this way, you can definitely do that. If you're feeling too, and you know, this is still a good setup. So some people even have a little bit less room than here. And this is usually sometimes the only way to set up your desk is in a way where the desk is against a wall and your back is to the rest of the room. So you're not in the optimal command position. So then what do we do, right? So in that case, we have to, this is the case of working with what you have. Put the printer back, put the chair back, there you are. So this looks probably pretty familiar to people, uh, having your back to what's coming at you. But what's nice about this is, you know, in this situation, you can see, at least see uh, out the window and hopefully it's a nice view, so that's inspiring. So the same way that you would have a piece of artwork in front of you, in this case, you have the outdoors. So what I would suggest in this case is you really want to correct this. So this line where you can't see what's coming at you and you feel a little bit vulnerable. Um, and the best way to do that is to add, and it doesn't have to be quite this big, this isn't very a very good scale, but let's say you had a small, this is, this is just the best I could come it looks like a frame but what I would recommend is you can even get like a rear view mirror small convex um, mirror um, that is able so you're able to see behind you so that's a pretty big one let's just make there we are so let's say you put a little mirror there on your desk you're able to see the door behind you the opening behind you the other thing is to add an additional protection let's let I don't I don't know what's coming through this door so it could be I don't know it could be a garage door it could be somewhere it's coming from the outside it could be something with a lot of you could be sharing this uh, this could be a room this could be your bed let's say and let's say you were sharing this room with many others that could be a lot of disruptive chi that's coming in so here this little yellow dot represents a feng shui crystal right behind your back that you can hang from the ceiling to disperse and modulate any um, energy that's being directed at you and I would also here I just lit I like the idea of having a floor lamp there to further light it up and to um, brighten up your space overall and to really boost the area right uh, right by your desk so that is sort of a quick and dirty way to look at how to set up your desk in a if it were an optimal position like we saw in the first or optimal uh, office layout and b if you're working with against a wall you're working in a multifunctional space the other thing i would say in a multifunctional space is you really want to make sure that you're creating designated areas so what um what can often happen is you have a you'll have a bed um, sofa or whatnot and you have to share the space so what you want to do you need to create a space that's dedicated to rest sleep if it's a bedroom and a study area and then an area set up for work or study and it they may still exist in the same room but at least you've made the effort to give them two distinct energy zones so here i've added the rug to really ground this space here to say you know what this is a separate energy area and this here is another area that you know you could add a rug to this naturally with the the back to it happens but if you had a bed let's say you wanted to do it 
Um, that way you could also add, you know, a screen perhaps between the back of the sofa and your, um, your study space or your workspace. So the idea is there's lots of creative ways you can do it, but really what we're, you're trying to do is make sure that even if it's a tight space, you've done your best to sort of create, okay, here's where I'm going to study and here's where I'm going to sleep or rest. And you can do it by just create, even if it's just a desk and you've zoned, that's your zone. And you can also really, you know, set the intention around that as being where you're going to be working and where you're going to be studying. And then over here, that's where I'm going to be sleeping because you really want to be able to sleep when you need to and work when you need to. And yes, you can bring your work over onto your bed. I would encourage it to be reading, um, you know, probably not ideal to be working with your laptop. If you have the option to have a desk, I would encourage you to use your desk, but this is just really to get yourself feeling that you have separate energy zones and task areas. So the next video I'm going to be doing will be on how to feng shui your desk. So it even takes it down one more step. So you know, you can only control, you can't, you, you can control what you can control. So zones closer and closer, you can control your bed, you can control yourself, you can control your bed, you can control your bedroom, you can control your desk top. So this is a way to sort of say, okay, maybe you're, maybe you're working in an environment where you have this hoteling or a spot where you're in an open concept spot and all you have, you have no walls, you can't do anything. All you have is your desktop to work with. So that's what the next video will be about, which is about how to simply feng shui your desktop and setting it up using the Bagua. Well, you can see how you can work with really any space, even if it has another purpose, as long as you can carve out a little area for yourself to create that workspace, you can really make it work and make sure that you're moving the energy and that you really feel secure and safe so that again, you can focus on your business and your studies and your work. So I encourage you to read the blog post below with more details. I'm also working on another video which is all about how to feng shui your actual desk itself. So the desktop itself, the immediate workspace around you. So that's coming up as well. So I'm looking forward to seeing you guys again and I'll see you soon. Bye.